and welcome to the Bullcast Podcast. I'm Katie Pickler, and with me today is Nicole Ellis. Hey, Katie. It's a girls' club today. Mm. Woo! No boys allowed. No boys. So, uh, what are we talking about, Nicole? Um, I think we're talking about being 30, which I don't know anything about. So, you're yeah. going to have to tell me about say, this. How old are you? I am 28. Okay, so, so 30 is right around the corner. I am in my 30s. We'll just say that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, Nicole pitched this idea to me, and it's 30, flirty, and thriving. So, obviously, if you have seen the movie 13 Going on 30, great, cute little movie. I think throughout different generations, there's stigmas around different ages, and it's like, you know, 21 is a big deal. You know, 50 is the new 30. And like, there's all these different slogans and stuff that go around about ages. And so before we get into it, this is really just kind of a episode about your 30s and kind of some important things. You know, we did an episode recently about retirement and um, talking about the important things you need to do in the different like 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s and beyond. But this is specifically dedicated to our 30s because that's a tough decade. Um, There's a lot going on. Yeah. And specifically when I was making this outline, I had to think, you know, we've done outlines about turning 50. We've done outlines about turning 18 and what's next. But nobody really talks about when you turn 30 because that's that is like you said, a big number. It's a big change and it can be hard for people. Late 20s and early to mid to even late 30s, like everybody is on different life cycles completely. You could have some people that are having like kids that are, you know, in high school. And then you could have some that haven't even started with kids yet. So it's just across the board, a wide variety. But before we get into it, uh, Nicole, you put together a great list about movies about being in your 30s. All right. I think we kind of started this list already. But of course, 13 going on 30 with Jennifer Gardner, Um, a 13 year old girl magically becomes 30 overnight. As she navigates her new adult life, she learns valuable lessons about love, friendship, and growing up. And that you get to have a magical closet when you turn 30. Yes. And Mark (laughs) Ruffalo will just come save you. Exactly. Okay. uh, Next one, which I love this movie, but it kind of makes me sad that she was in her early 30s. So Bridget Jones Diary, a single woman in her early 30s, navigates the ups and downs of her love life and career while trying to improve herself through humorous diary entries. Okay. Like... I remember watching this when I was younger, and I still will watch because there's multiple in the series. Didn't realize she was in her early 30s because they made it seem like she was such a spinster and I know. everyone had given up hope. I feel like nowadays that would be more closer to like maybe mid 40s or something. Mm-hmm. Somebody's doing that and kind of feeling down in the dumps. But in, if you're listening and you're in your mid 40s, it's Oay. No worries. Like we're, you're fine. We're not judging. <laughs> we're not judging. I guess that's how the times change of like, yeah. I remember when this came out, my mom was in love with it, and I just was a kid, so I yeah. just assumed she had to be old, but now that she's 30... No, she's in her early I'm like, 30s? This is not right. No! Uh, Red flag. <laughs> I know. Gosh, Renee Zellweger was great in that. Mm-hmm. The next movie on the list is actually one of my favorite movies of all time. It's called Tick, Tick, Boom, and guess what? It's a musical. <laughs> I have not seen this. This is... Yeah, like I said, it's one of my favorite movies, so Andrew Garfield stunningly portrays Jonathan Larson... If you don't know who that is, he wrote the musical Rent. And then he also wrote this musical Tick, Tick, Boom. It's kind of like an autobiography on his life. And it's about how he's about to turn 30 and he's ruined with fear. So there's a song, if Court were here, he would sing it with me, (laughs) where he goes, turn 30, 1990. And it's all about turning 30 in the year 1990. Oh, fun. It's a great movie. I'll have to check it out. On Netflix. Oh, I love this next movie. Big. Um, This is Tom Hanks. A young boy makes a wish to become an adult and wakes up a 30-year-old dealing with the challenges and adventures of adult life. Now, Big was amazing. And if you Mm -hmm. ever go into FAO Sports, then you have the iconic scene from Big with the floor piano that you play with your body. Mm -hmm. And he had, I mean, it's a kind of an example of if we were to give a little kid a bunch of money, but with an adult body so you've got the ability to drive and credit cards and things like Mm -hmm. that and he buys bunk beds and buys toys and this is like the boy version of 13 going on 30 yeah it is so and but much much older yeah a lot older but both are classic yes uh, it's zoltan (laughs) love it (laughs) the next one on the list i've actually never seen 
I don't know if you've seen this one, Katie. It's called The Big Chill. Mm -hmm. It's a classic film that explores a group of college friends who reunite in their 30s and grapple with the realities of adulthood, relationships, and career choices. Yeah, it's been a while, but I have seen this one. Well, I'll add it to my list. (laughs) (laughs) And the last one on our list is Bridesmaids. The hilarious comedy explores the pressures and anxieties of female friendship and social expectations as women approach their 30s. Absolutely. This ties great into the fact that obviously that movie is a comedy, but one of them's like very well to do and has their crap together. Or she says she does. Or she says she does. And and that's that's another thing of leaning into like expectations versus reality of what you see sometimes on the exterior is not actually what's happening. And so I think with this one, Kristen Wiig really struggles because she's had some mishaps through her career. And as a society, I think we naturally all compare to each other. That's just of part of it. You're constantly comparing your net worth, your beauty, your everything. You are constantly comparing to other people. And no one really knows what the other person is going through. And right. so it's kind of the thing we say, don't judge a book by its cover. Same thing with when you're looking at other people. Just because it looks like they've got it all together, you don't know. They could have other problems that you know nothing about. Right. And then this list is a common theme kind of that's going with the outline that's all about the big change in your 30s of what your friends look like, what your career is. Yeah. And I guess this is a common theme in your 30s, as yeah. you said. I want to go through this episode and just to reiterate to everybody, I am on the side of I am in my middle of my 30s. I'm 35. So I, I'm right there in the middle of it. And Nicole is two years away from being into the 30s club. So we're trying to give you a different perspective of those who haven't made it yet. And then I've been in it for five years. So I yeah. feel like I've got my card by now. Yeah. And so you're going to give me some good advice. I hope so. Okay. Transition to peak earning years. Oh, okay. Your late 30s, hear that everybody, late 30s are often when you start earning the big bucks or at least enough bucks. And again, this is not a comparison, but I'm glad they put late 30s because I think a lot of people think about your 20s. You probably went to college, you graduated, and then you're really trying to figure out what do you want to do? Where do you want to be? And so it could be a, a combination of trying out different jobs, figuring out are you, you know, moving out from your parents? Are you getting your own place? Did you already find your soulmate and you're getting married and having babies? Like what's going on? And so your late 30s, you know, hopefully you're getting increased income. You're getting more seasoned in your career. And, you know, maybe you haven't found your career yet, but if you have found something, maybe you're getting more established. You've got financial ease and security and potential for increased spending. Now that sounds fun. That's right up my alley. <laughs> But these are just kind of some traditionally. Now, if if you are not on this track, it's okay. But I would say it's one of those that your 30s are kind of the years that you need to kind of buckle down and figure out where's your path? Which direction are you going in? So focus on financial goals. You know, this is peak earning years to enhance financial stability and avoid lifestyle inflation. Lifestyle inflation. I feel like that's something that you could easily get sucked into. Oh, yeah. Well, and I, I think that's, you know, Keeping up with the Joneses, Mm -hmm. keeping up with the influencers. I mean, I do like that some of these influencers, I know I've talked about this before, but I don't think with you, Nicole, like Collins Tui, she's obviously kind of a local-ish influencer. Um, The Tui's family obviously was a part of the blind side, but they're, I mean, they're from Memphis. They're Mm -hmm. here. She does seem to be really good about posting things that are like at Walmart or off Amazon. And so it's not all the ridiculously like, here's my great outfit. It's $5,000. $5,000. Mm-hmm. So she does try and do that. Okay, I'm going off on a tangent. Those influencers <laughs> can get you worked up. They get you, but really it's okay. So we have transitioned into the 30s, but Nicole, as someone who's not in their 30s yet, do not feel the pressure that you feel like a ticking time bomb because I think too much society puts expectations. Like it used to be if you don't have a baby by the time you're 25, then you know, you're know you a Spencer. Now, not too long ago, it bumped to 30. Now it's more acceptable to have them later in life. But I think a lot of people put way too much pressure on themselves. And so if you're listening to this and you hear, well, Katie said I need to be uh, financially secure and I need to be banking more money and things like that in my 30s, do not glue to that. But maybe look at that as an opportunity to, as you enter the 30s sector, to start thinking about, am I in the job I want to be in? 
And that's where you can start having those conversations, which are hard to have. But I remember I got married when I was 30 because I'm coming up on my five year anniversary. Congratulations. Thanks. And my husband and I both made huge career shifts right before we got married. So mine was actually, let's see, 30 days before my 30th birthday. Follow that. I made a drastic decision to leave the job that I had been at for six years and make an entire career shift to the financial world. Scary as all get out. Now, my husband, he had some stuff going on and he made a drastic change. He's a little bit older than me. So his drastic change was when he was 32. And so both of us, like, you know, we kind of saw that 30s, early 30s mark is like, we need to figure out what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I think if nothing else, just don't lock into you've got to have it all together by 30, but maybe use those early 30s as a, am I where I want to be? And if I'm not, what changes do I need to make? Or do I need to go to management and say, because this is what I did. I went to them and said, I want to be here. I want to be a part of this. And but I need to see a path of how I can grow and what are metrics that I can hit to get there. And they weren't really able to show me that. And it was heartbreaking, but I knew that was my sign that I needed to figure out where to go next. It's going to hit people at different age. It's not like you you wake up and it's like, oh, this is the day I decided to destroy my life and move to the next thing. I've been here for two years. I think this Friday, actually. Oh, wow. So two years ago, I was, what, 26? And I kind of had a come to Jesus moment where I was like, I don't like my job. There's no growth potential, so I'm just going to leave. And we and got you. Yeah, now I'm here. So it ended up, it was really scary, but it ended up working out. I kind of took like a couple months of a sabbatical, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it led me in the right direction, and hopefully it will lead me into my 30s. And and so maybe you did yours younger. Yeah. Like, everybody has different moments like that, but it's just, it's kind of using that as a benchmark of, hey, I've got my 20s and 30s to kind of figure out what I want to do. And then my 40s and 50s are to really maximize. But I mean, some people completely change their whole career. Yeah. You got to do what works for you. Okay. Monitor your debt to income ratio. Katie, tell me about it. Whew. Okay. So this is something that I deal with a lot with people. And it is it is a frustrating thing. But when you sit there and think about it, when somebody's going to lend you money to finance a car, to get a house, to do different things like that, they are going to look at how much money you have in versus how much debt you have. And that tells them your ability to borrow, what your obligations you already have. And so the DTI is what is oftentimes called debt to income ratio is the percentage of gross monthly income spent on debt. Gross monthly income spent on debt. So lenders use this ratio as one of the major factors of deciding whether to extend you a loan. The higher your percentage, the more lenders are likely to perceive you as a risky borrower. And you're like, well, that's rude. Well, yeah, I mean, but they're looking at it as like, you've already got a lot of debt. How are you going to have this? How are you going to be sustainable? Now, what I will tell you is kind of difficult, especially 20s, 30s, is If you're merging with another individual, then, for instance, think about this, like, I'm married, but there's different debts that are on me than on my husband. And so that's something to think about when if I was to go get a car loan, then it's like, okay, I've got the mortgage just under me. He doesn't have the mortgage underneath him. So then my debt to income ratio is going to be different. Or if, you know, one spouse makes more than the other. So there's a lot of factors that go into that to make sure you're balanced. How the heck are we going to manage this DTI? We're going to track as income increases. We're going to have strategies to try and lower it. So increase income. Well, that's great. Sure. Hey, boss, I need to increase my income because I need my DTI to go up. (laughs) What? (laughs) Or pay off some debt. Again, those are kind of like, okay, great, Katie. Like, let me just make some more money and pay off some debt. Like, sure, sounds good. I know that's frustrating, but it's just being intentional and thinking about that. And also, I had a a listener actually reach out to me recently and talked about the number of credit cards that you should have. And there was a situation where there's an influencer there they listened to, and they had an ungodly amount of credit cards, lots and lots of credit cards. And they use them all the time. But then she heard of another situation when she was buying her car that this girl 
did not get approved for financing because she had like upwards of $100,000 that could have been used on these credit cards. And so trying to find the right balance. And so, so much of what you decide in your 20s and 30s with credit card debt, with what lines of credit you open up with things like that, that follows you. That has an impact for your 30s. And then you're like, dang it, why did I open up a Victoria's Secret card and an Amazon card and a Joe Jonas fan club card and a witchcraft, <laughs> a witchcraft card. card and all these different cards. So like, for instance, Nicole and I, and y'all may know this or may not, um, we share a common interest with uh, our family members being in the car industry. We love cars. So Nicole's dad is in uh, the car industry as well as my husband. And so we get to hear a lot about some of kind of the woes of what happens where people are not approved for financing. And a lot of times these people are shocked. They're frustrated by it. And it could be that they have student loan debt that's crippling them or they got wrapped into credit cards when they were in college and they thought that closing them out or consolidating them would help them. But if nothing else, Nicole, what I can tell you is as you merge into your 30s, also kind of look at it as what do I need to try and clean up for my 20s before I move into my 30s? Like, again, it's not this magical, like, happy new year. You cleanse last year and you start fresh. It doesn't happen that way. But there are ways that you can set personal milestones and be like, hey, let me let me figure out what my debt to income ratio is. Let me figure out what I've got on here and do I have abilities to maybe be a little bit more aggressive? But again, every situation is different. So it's best to talk to a financial professional and say like, hey, what are these debts should I try and pay off quicker than others? Because again, you've got to look at opportunity cost and there's a whole thing in there that you can do. That's a whole spiel. That's a whole spiel in itself. That's a horse of a different color. Mm-hmm. I haven't said that one in a while. I've never heard that before. Oh, I used to is say that a 30 it. saying? I used to say it. All the time when we first started this podcast. Throwback. Yep. Okay. Maximizing tax-deferred retirement contributions. Hey, Nicole, welcome to the 30s. We're talking retirement money. That's a lot of words I don't understand. (sighs) Well, again, this is kind of like a gut check. Hey, you're going into the 30s. Are you contributing to a retirement account? Does your employer have one? Are you doing what you can to try and max it out? And so we've talked about this one a ton on different episodes, but really kind of trying to understand what are your benefits because you've got IRAs, you've got 401ks, you've got options where you contribute to them and it can help lower your taxable income. You've got some that it's you pay the taxes now and then when you pull the money out, then it's tax free. That's going to be Roth versus traditional is what I just talked about. And so this is where it sounds crazy because I just, you know, whip last year. I just told you, like, figure out what you want to do, start making more money, get it together. But then I'm also telling you, hey, let's think about retirement. So that's confusing. Yes. Are you with me, Nicole? Are you scared? I'm trying. I'm here. (laughs) I'm ready. Again, there's so much. And I love how on this list it says prioritizing long-term retirement accounts, health. And I also want to add in there, thinking about your health. Because that's something that it's obviously how you take care of yourself in your 30s is then going to turn into how you're going to be when you're 70, 80, 90, 100. So, yes, I realize I'm putting a lot of stress on Welcome to the 30s Club, and there's a lot that's coming at you. Oh, and this is the least sexy thing, too. Let's talk about insurance. Ooh. So now that I've talked to you about debt-to-income ratio and retirement, now we're going to talk about insurance. Oh, because you probably, you know, you're definitely off your parents by now Mm because you've passed the cutoff for that, and you've got to figure out how insurance works, which... That's confusing. Yeah, let's be honest. Most people are just kind of like, I don't know, I'm just kind of guessing here and Mm -hmm. figuring it out. And I'll be honest, like it wasn't until, you know, not that long ago, it's kind of embarrassing that I really understood health insurance and things like that when my husband had a kind of emergency situation. And I'm trying, I'm like, well, let's just go to this doctor. Let's just get this done. And it's like, you got to go through insurance. Mm -hmm. You got to do this. And I'm like, that's so frustrating. So Yes, I'm admitting y'all to my faults of it's complicated. And, you know, you're expected to be an adult. You're expected to thrive in your career. You're expected to be fit and take care of yourself. And then you're expected to make sure you're maintaining your debt to income ratio and your retirement accounts and your insurance. Holy moly, Nicole, how are we going to do it? It's a lot to think about, honestly. So you want to know my secret? Yes. I get some partners. I get some people to help me. 
that's key. Yeah. And so that I do not try and rely on doing it all myself. And I don't trust what I'm hearing on TikTok or what other friends are doing. And I ask the questions to make sure. But I also check on it every so often. We're officially dead now that we're 30. (laughs) (laughs) So there's an omen. I'll just let everybody know. Nicole and I are recording uh, by ourselves. We usually have our master. I was about to call him a master (laughs) mycologist. Master recorder, master uh, editor Cam in here. And for some reason, without Cam's presence in here, the room has gone dark. I mean, first it was dimmed, but now we are sitting here recording in the dark. And so... I feel like, Nicole, I promised you this was not like some this Halloween is, skit. This is kind of scary for me. Which the 30- Welcome to 30. Your life goes dark. <laughs> <laughs> not no. true. Yeah. But so, Nicole, tell me kind of in your own words, what do you feel like your expectations are of what you want to try and accomplish or do before 30? Oh, that's a big question. I got <laughs> two years to figure this out. I mean, I definitely want to be on my own. I've always liked the idea of being independent. Um, You know, I've got my bachelor's degree, so that was a huge step for me. I don't know. I just want to be confident in myself and confident in my abilities, whether that's personal life or career-wise. I think I'm getting there. That sounds so simple, but it's actually a lot to take in when you're an overthinker and anxious like me. So I don't know. What advice do you have to give me? I love what you said, and I think that's important. I'm not trying to set big goals because, you know, if I go on Facebook right now, like you said, I'm 28. Half the people I'm friends with are married with children, and the other half are like me, just trying to get concert tickets and have fun. So you could be anywhere, and you're going to get judged regardless. And I'm seven years older than you, and so I'm still dealing with that. Like, Mm -hmm. majority of my friends have one baby, maybe working on their second, and... I'm just kind of here like, well, I'm doing great in my career. Mm -hmm. You can do both. And I think that's a lot of times is because if I was just to take a look, I'd be like, okay, well, they're focusing on family. I'm focusing on career. But it's not that way. It's not that black and white because some of them are very much still focusing on their career and their family. And it doesn't have to be one or the other, but it's got to be right for you. And there is no timetable of you have to accomplish these certain things by these days. Yeah, and I think a lot of times, you know, as women speaking, we want to put each other in boxes like, oh, I can't have a family and have a great career Yeah, just because that's kind of how we were raised, maybe. It was, but, yeah. Or what we've seen on TV, but you actually, you can have both. I think it's important to understand that because... You can do what you want. We're complex. We don't have to be put in boxes. Yeah, you can do what you want. I think, and I'm struggling with this one right now, is... I think it's naturally happened, but I've also pushed myself away from a lot of my core friends that have kids right now because I feel like they have this connection all together because they're able to talk about like baby woes Mm -hmm. and like things like that that happen. And I'm just kind of like, hi, I'm here. I'll hold your baby. Yeah, it's Mm -hmm. I just I, I feel like I'm not connected to them anymore. And I don't think any of them feel that way. But I think sometimes... We put too much pressure on ourselves and just love the people you love and have support and talk to people. But there should not be these expectations that are out there. And again, I think a lot of it is mostly female driven. Mm -hmm. I think males for the most part, and that's that's very sexist to say, but I just do think that especially when it comes to the difference of careers versus families, then yes, it's a huge change for a male to start having a family, but it is a much more impactful on a female because then you're not able to just on a whim go on these concert trips anymore and you're not able to your your career will have to take a not a stop but just kind of a slowdown Mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of expectations with that yeah but I think it's just kind of one of those like we're all just kind of coasting along we're all trying to figure it out together and so my recommendations for you is moving into your 30s is pick yourself up every day and do what makes you happy But also know that it's challenging. You are going to get frustrated. There's going to be things that come up that you think you've done the right thing, and then you find out you haven't. And it's just you're figuring it out. But the best thing to do is get a partner, get somebody to talk to to help you. Make sure you're starting to be aware of the adulting things like estate planning documents, tax documents, investments. And again, 
I am loving that recently I've had so many people in their mid to late 20s coming and talking to me. It's fantastic. I wish more people would come and talk to me in this, you know, late 20s, early 30s range because you are enough. You are worth my time to talk to and worth a financial advisor's time, a tax preparer's time, an attorney's time, just to go ahead and see are you on the right track or not? So I know, Nicole, you know, you've already kind of had some introductory conversations with me about, you know, financial planning and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. And so, yeah, that was kind of going to be part of my bullseye. That's okay. We can share is don't be afraid to ask questions because I might go ask Katie a question and I'll start it off as can I ask you a stupid question? And it's not really stupid because I know stupid questions. I just didn't know the answer. But now that I've been working here and I'm able to ask questions it's really helped me a lot in my financial career so yeah don't be afraid to ask for help or ask questions but make sure you're asking the right person i'm not trying to burst your fun but you do need to grow up some when it comes to some of the stupid mistakes we all make of just like blowing through our money or maxing out our credit cards um now i'm not going to say i don't make stupid mistakes i Got FOMO from Nicole and bought Eris to her tickets that were a little expensive. But and if she wants to have a lot of fun, <laughs> she knows who to ask. <laughs> but it's also one of those like, I know I did that, so I'm an adult now. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, so then don't make other, you know, stupid frivolous purchases out there. So I'm not telling you that, you know, the 30s is the death of your fun or it's time to get serious. But it is time to just start thinking about What are some smart moves that I can do now that's going to put me in a better position in the future? That's why I tell people all the time, especially if you are making good money and you don't have a family, you don't have a lot of responsibilities, then put that money aside. Save it, have it earning and working for you because your future self is going to thank you instead of you're able to look back and see at that exact moment, ladies and gentlemen, the lights came on. We have come out of the darkness of the doom and gloom of the 30s, and we are excited because we've got, I feel like I'm a preacher over here. (laughs) This was kind of incredible. I don't know how that just happened. The lights are on. We are almost 30 and 30, flirty and thriving. Be excited about your 30s. It's going to be great. And now I got to try and do this closing, which I've never really done by myself. So here we go. May the power of court compel you. Oh, there's the closing bell. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Bullcast podcast. I am Katie and this is Nicole. And this is going to be a totally different closing because you're doing it with me. So we, if we haven't said it before, we work at a place called Pickler Wealth Advisors. And uh, we've got an amazing team here. I am butchering this so much, but you know what? We're going to keep going with it. Yeah, I believe in you. So, Nicole, tell us. we got some socials. Where can people check out? You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram. And you can even find us on X. Bullcast Podcast or Bullcast The Podcast. Yeah. You're going to find us. Well, we got pictures on there. And Nicole's got a lot of on pictures. there. I'm, pictures of us. Pictures of memes. Yeah. You can find it all. Yep. And so, like I said, we work at a place called Pickler Wealth Advisors. That's advisors with an O. Not an E. And, you know, we'd love for you guys to keep listening. We've got new episodes coming to you every Thursday at noon. And if you'd like to be a guest, we'd love to hear from you. You can drop us a note on X. You can send us a Facebook message, whatever you want to do. Send us an email. Go to our website. Yeah, so we are here. And so wrapping up this terrible closing because we miss court and Katie doesn't do the close. I'm Katie. And I'm Nicole. And we are excited for the light to come on and be in our 30s. Let's go. Let's go.